building a Python GUI application with TK Inter. Python has a lot of GUI frameworks, but TK Inter is the only framework that's built into the Python standard library. TK Inter has several strengths. It's cross platform, so the same code works on Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. Visual elements are rendered using native operating system elements, so applications built with TK Inter look like they belong on the platform where they're run. Although it's considered the de facto Python GUI framework, it's not without criticism. One notable one is that GUIs built with TK Inter look outdated. If you want a shiny modern interface, then TK Inter may not be what you're looking for. But TK Inter is lightweight and relatively painless to use compared to some other frameworks. This makes it a compelling choice for building Python GUI applications, particularly where modern sheen is unnecessary and the top priority is to quickly build something that's functional and cross-platform. In this course, you'll learn how to get started with TK Inter with a Hello World application, work with widgets such as buttons and text boxes, control your application layout with geometry managers, and make your applications interactive. Once you've mastered these skills, you'll tie everything together by building two applications, a temperature converter and a text editor. This course was created using Python 3.12, but everything in it should work on most recent Python versions. So now you know what's going to be covered, let's get started. Getting up and running with TK Inter. If you've installed Python with the official installers available for Windows and macOS from python.org, then you should have no problem running the code seen on screen. But if you haven't installed Python with the official installers, or there's no official distribution for your system, then here are some tips for getting up and running. The Python distribution for macOS on Homebrew doesn't come bundled with the TCL TK dependency that's required for TK Inter. The default system version is used instead and this version may be outdated and prevent you from importing the TK into module. To avoid this problem, use the official macOS installer. To conserve memory space, the default version of the Python interpreter that comes pre-installed on Ubuntu Linux has no support for TK Inter. But if you want to continue using the Python interpreter bundled with your operating system, then you can install the package seen on screen. This will install the Python GUI TK Inter module. If you're unable to get a working Python installation on your flavor of Linux, then you can build Python with the correct version of TCLTK from the source code. For a step-by-step -step walkthrough of this process, check out this real Python guide. Also note that if you're using an alternate Python shell such as bpython or ptpython, you may find that the TK into window doesn't open straight away when you issue the commands to do so. So while you're getting familiar with the library, stick to the Python standard REPL instead, as this will react in the same way as you see on screen. Now that you have TK Inter up and running, in the next section of the course, you'll start using it by building your first GUI application. Building your first GUI application with TK Inter. The foundational element of a TK Inter GUI is the window. Windows are the containers in which all other GUI elements live. These other elements, such as text boxes, labels, and buttons, are known as widgets. And widgets are contained inside of Windows. First, you'll want to create a window that contains a single widget. Open up a new Python shell session and follow along. With the Python shell open, the first thing to do is to import tkinter using the standard alias of tk. A window is an instance of tkinter's tk class. Go ahead and create a new window and assign it to the variable window. When you execute the code, a new window will pop up on your screen. How it looks will depend on your operating system. Throughout the rest of the course, you'll see the code running on macOS. Now that you have a window, you can add a widget. Use the TK Label class to add some text to a window. Create a label widget with the text Hello TK Inter and assign it to a variable called Greeting.
you may note that the window you created earlier doesn't change. You've created a label widget, but you haven't added it to the window yet. There are several ways to add widgets to a window, but right now you'll use the pack method. The window now has the text in it. When you pack a widget into a window, TKinter sizes the window as small as it can be while still encompassing the widget. Now execute the next line. Nothing seems to happen, but notice that no new prompt appears in your shell. Window main loop tells Python to run the TKinter event loop. This method listens for events such as button clicks and key presses and blocks any code that comes after it from running until you close the window where you called the method. Close the window you've created, and you'll see a new prompt appear in the shell. One thing to note is when you work with tkinter from the REPL, updates to windows are applied as each line is executed. But this is not the case when a tkinter program is executed from a Python file. If you don't include window main loop at the end of a program in a Python file, then the tkinter application will never run, so nothing will be displayed. Creating a window with tkinter only takes a couple of lines of code, but blank windows aren't very useful. So in the next section of the course, you'll learn about some of the widgets available in tkinter and how you can customize them to meet your application's needs. Working with widgets. Widgets are the bread and butter of tkinter. They're the elements through which users interact with your program. Each widget in tkinter is defined by a class, and on screen you can see some of the widgets available. You'll see how to work with each of these in the following sections of the course, but keep in mind that tkinter has many more widgets than those listed on screen. For a full list of tkinter widgets, you can check out basic widgets, and more widgets in the TK Docs tutorial. Even though it describes themed widgets introduced in TCL TK 8.5, most of the information there should also apply to the classic widgets. Label widgets are used to display text or images. The text displayed by a label widget can't be edited by the user, it's for display purposes only. As you saw earlier, you can create a label widget by instantiating the label class and passing a string to the text parameter. Label widgets display text with the default system text color and the default system text background color. These are typically black and white respectively, but you may see different colors if you change these settings in your operating system, such as when you're using dark mode. You can control label text and background colors from the foreground and background parameters. Many of the HTML color names work with tkinter. For a full reference, including the macOS and Windows specific system colors that the current system theme controls, check out the colors manual page linked on screen. You can also specify a color using hexadecimal RGB values. This sets the label background to a light blue color. Hexadecimal RGB values are more cryptic than name colors, but they're also more flexible. Fortunately, there are tools available that make getting hexadecimal color codes relatively painless. If typing out foreground and background is too long, then you can use the shorthand FG and BG parameters to set the foreground and background respectively. You can also control the width and height of a label with the width and height parameters. You can see the effect of this on screen. It may seem strange that the label in the window isn't square, even though the width and height are both set to 10. This is because the width and height are measured in text units. A horizontal text unit is determined by the width of the character zero in the default system font. Similarly, a vertical text unit is defined by the height of the character zero. 
This ensures consistent behavior of the application across platforms and ensures that text fits properly in labels and buttons regardless of where it's running. Button widgets are used to display clickable buttons. You can configure them to call a function whenever they're clicked. You'll cover how to call functions from button clicks later on in the course. But for now, let's look how to create and style a button. There are similarities between button and label widgets. In many ways, a button is just a label that you can click. The same keyword arguments that you use to create and style a label will work with button widgets. For example, this code creates a button with a blue background and yellow text. It also sets the width and height to 25 and 5 text units respectively. Here's what the button looks like on Windows. If you're running a recent version of macOS, then you'll find that the code just seen doesn't change the background color of the button. On screen, you can see the button which results from running that code. You can see the text color has changed, but the background hasn't. This is due to changes in the way that macOS works, so if you really want to change the background color of a button, then you'll need to use an alternate solution such as TK Mac OS X. This is a library extension that provides an alternate implementation of button, allowing for changes to the background color as seen with the code on screen. Note that button is imported from TK Mac OS X and then used instead of the standard TK into button. But also note that the size of the button is given in pixels, not text units. So this will make cross-platform implementation more complex. It may well be worth sacrificing the ability to change the background color of a button in favor of code which runs without modification across multiple platforms. But that's a decision you'll have to weigh up yourself. In the next section of the course, we'll take a look at how you can get user input with entry widgets. Getting user input with entry widgets. When you need to get a little bit of text from a user, such as a name or an email address, you can use an entry widget. It will display a small text box that the user can type some text into. Creating and styling an entry widget works pretty much like the label and button widgets you've already seen. The code seen on screen creates a widget with a blue background, some yellow text, and a width of 50 text units. But styling isn't the interesting part of entry widgets. It's how to use them to get input from a user. There are three main operations you can perform with an entry widget. Retrieving text with get, deleting text with delete, and inserting text with insert. The best way to get an understanding of entry widgets is to create one and interact with it. Open up a Python shell and enter the code seen on screen. First, importing tkinter and creating a new window. Now create a label and an entry widget. The label describes the sort of text that should go into the entry widget. It doesn't enforce any sort of requirements on the entry, but it does tell the user what the programmer expects them to enter. You need to pack the widgets into the window so that they're visible. On screen, you can see what they look like. Notice that tkinter automatically centers the label above the entry widget in the window. This is a feature of pack, which you'll learn about later on in the course. Click inside the entry widget with your mouse and type real Python. Now you've got some text entered into the entry widget, but that text hasn't been sent to the program yet. But you can use get to retrieve the text and assign it to a variable called name. You can delete the text as well. The delete method takes an integer argument that tells Python which character to remove. 
Here you delete the first character from entry. Note that this is zero indexed, just like Python strings. If you need to remove several characters from an entry, then pass a second integer argument to delete, indicating the index of the character where deletion should stop. Entry delete works just like string slicing. The first argument determines the starting index, and the deletion continues up to but not including the index passed as the second argument. You can use the special constant tk.end for the second argument of delete to remove all text in an entry. And as you can see, the text box is now blank. You can also insert text into an entry widget using insert. The first argument tells insert where to insert the text. If there's no text in entry, then the new text will always be inserted at the beginning of the widget, no matter what value you pass as the first argument. If entry already contains some text, then insert will insert the new text at the specified position and shift all existing text to the right. Entry widgets are great for capturing small amounts of text from a user, but because they're only displayed on a single line, they're not ideal for gathering large amounts of text. That's where text widgets come in, and that's what you'll be looking at in the next section of the course.